All right, so start out with the basics again, just like we do with all these classes. So medic knife or medic knife, uh, fire bug knife, uh, D tier. You're pretty much never gonna use it on fire bug unless you're gonna use it to block with. And that's it. You're probably not going to be using it for clearing trash sets because all of your weapons are so good for that. Uh, 9mm pistol, same thing. Uh, it's always going to go in C tier, unless it's like good on certain classes. Like it's probably going to go to a B tier for, uh, if it isn't B tier for Commando, probably B tier for uh, SWAT, and it'll probably be B tier for uh, maybe Sharpshooter and Gunslinger because they can use it pretty well too, but that's because they have abilities that help help it out a bit more. Molotovs. Molotovs are actually really good. They're probably the best uh, grenade at killing small stuff. They can be, you can burn yourself with them though, which is bad, uh, but you can't burn your friends with them. So throwing them at your friend's feet, if they're playing something like Sharpshooter, is not a bad idea. Um, so I'm going to put Molotovs in A tier. They're pretty good. Um, they can also... Potentially be bad if you cause Scrakes or Flesh Pounds to rage, um, but you can also get the fire effect, which causes them to freak out similar to the toxic effect. Um, it's just, it's not always preferred if you're throwing Molotovs at Scrakes. Don't do that if you're new to Firebug. And then we've got the Coggin Burn. The Coggin Burn, uh, to start out with, at least as a weapon by itself without any perks or anything, it's pretty bad. Um, it weighs a good amount, it doesn't refill ammo as well as other weapons, it gets a lower uh, ammo refill rate. It does good damage over time, and it does okay damage um, on hit. However, with certain perks like uh, ground fire, it can be really good and be very useful early on because it's pretty cost effective. It does 10 damage on direct hit at a rate of fire of 100 or 850. The splash damage does 5 damage with a 1.5 meter radius. This also deals damage over time and can cause ground fire that deals 10 damage at a 1 meter radius. So you can do a lot of damage over time and damage over time isn't the easiest to quantify with uh, Firebug. Also its upgrades are pretty lackluster. It only gets about 10% each time you upgrade it up to 50% bonus damage at 4 weight. So it does okay-ish damage at 9 weight which is not good. Um, it's not that great of a weapon in all honesty. Um, it's probably, probably my least, it's definitely my least favorite weapon to find on a survivalist because you get no bonuses with it. On Firebug, it's not bad though. C tier. Up next, we're going to talk about the Spitfires. One of them, and then we're going to talk about dual Spitfires. So one Spitfire only costs you 325. That's pretty cheap. Uh, weighs 2, it gets a uh, 6 round magazine, just like a regular revolver. It does 40 damage on direct hit, uh, and then damage over time. It can cause floor fires as well, and then of course the residual flame which also deals damage. Um, it also has decently high stagger chance, and it's one of the few weapons that you can upgrade that doesn't increase its weight, at least for the first upgrade. Its upgrades are actually pretty good too, it upgrades by 25% increments, so it gets really pretty strong per shot. Um, on Firebug, Firebug can make excellent use of the there's a the single Spitfire. Um, so I think I'm gonna put this one in B tier. It's a pretty solid weapon, especially for its weight. Uh, maybe low A tier for certain loadouts, but overall I think high B tier is a pretty good place for it. Dual Spitfires, on the other hand, though, dual Spitfires are also pretty cheap. <laughs> Let's see, dual Spitfires do the same damage, they do 40 damage, they have the same scaling, and more interestingly, they also don't get any weight for their first upgrade, which is really nice. Um, they also only weigh 4, which fits into a lot of loadouts. This just gives them a bigger magazine, a higher rate of fire, it does lower their reload speed, obviously. But um, these guns are actually really, really good with Firebug. They are insanely good if you're running the... Uh, is it Inferno or Burn the World or whatever their 25 perk is that lets you have infinite ammo? You can create an entire room of floor fire where almost anything will die in it. it it's kind of it's kind of crazy. So yeah, they're going to uh, high A tier for Fire Rod. They might I might put them in low S tier. We'll see as we go on with the list. 
They are, they're very strong. I like them. All right, our next two, tier two weapon that we're going to talk about is the Dragon's Breath. We talked about this on support, and it's not way great on support. It's still okay as support, because you still get a lot of bonus assists with it. Fire damage is kind of nice, damage over time is nice, but it did have a small magazine slow reload. So for support, we put it in C tier. However, on Firebug, it's actually really good because it's one of their highest damage early weapons. It does a really high amount of damage early on for the other Firebug weapons in comparison. Since it shoots out six pellets to do 35 damage apiece, equaling 210 damage total, not counting fire damage. And this one can also start floor fires, which is also really good. You're also going to be racking up a ton of assists with this because fire spreads like crazy to everything. Um, and it's uh, it's pretty good. It also has pretty good scaling too with upgrades. It gets 10% bonus for each upgrade, which is nice for a shotgun. Um, and it ends up being a total weight of 8 if you fully upgrade it, which is also okay. It does let you take other items like the uh, Spitfires, and I think this one actually probably belongs at the same rank as Spitfires in A rank. It's pretty good all around. Um, yeah, good option. Very cheap. Um, it's also really good with the bonus ammunition, the large capacity tanks that fire, uh, yeah, Firebug gets, because then that doubles your effective uh, tank capacity, which also counts for clip capacity. So you go from having six rounds of pump action to 12 rounds, and then reloading isn't as big of an issue because usually you can uh, deal with any sort of situation that you might have with 12 rounds and then have time to reload them. Um, so it, it's pretty good for that. Uh, I like it. I think it's a good weapon. Especially on Firebug. Firebug makes the best use of this weapon, in my opinion. So our very first tier 3 weapon with uh, Firebug is the Mac 10 Now the Mac 10 is a fire submachine gun. Uh, they've, changed the, uh, they've changed it a couple times. Uh, they changed the sound design on it, which is good. I like the way it sounds better now. Uh, it does 29 or 28 damage a shot, uh, again doing fire damage over time. This one cannot start floor fires. Uh, it holds 32 rounds in the magazine, which is good. Its iron sights are pretty bad. Uh, I say that because sometimes you do want to aim down sights with more direct fire guns. With like these other guns, you don't really necessarily need to aim down sights with them, so I haven't mentioned their sights. Uh, this one you also don't necessarily need to as well. Uh, and its iron sights aren't the best. It has a 900 rounds a minute rate of fire, which is good. Um, and its upgrades are okay. It gets 15% more damage with each upgrade, which is not a whole lot, but then most uh, submachine guns don't do a whole ton of damage. This gun also used to, before, have a very unique ability, and that was uh, it counted as doing shotgun damage rather than doing submachine gun damage, which didn't make it do any, it didn't like make it into a shotgun or anything, but it did count towards the damage uh, amplifiers or debuffs towards other monsters and more monsters, or more Zeds I should say, more Zeds are more resistant to submachine gun rounds than to shotgun rounds, at least stronger Zeds are. Um, right now it just sits kind of in a weird spot, it's really good with um, the burning of world, I should really check what that perk is called, <laughs> and the, uh, see that one. Pyromaniac, that's what it is. It's really good with Pyromaniac because you get infinite rate of fire, um, well, you get infinite ammo during Zed time, and for that, it's quite strong. Um, outside of that case, though, it's not super strong. Um, it also benefits quite a bit from the large capacity magazines, giving it uh, 64 rounds of ammunition, which is a lot. Um, and it reloads quick anyway, so that's kind of nice. Overall, this is just kind of a nice overall gun, but doesn't do anything super spectacular, so I'm going to put it in B tier. Alright, the next weapon is the HRG Scorcher. Now, this is the grenade pistol that's been reworked to shoot out flares. With its primary fire, it fires out a regular flare that goes in a straight line. This does have a pretty limited range, though. Uh, it does drop off rapidly. Once you hit something with it, um, then it does... 333 direct impact damage as well as damage over time because of the burning. Um, now you can fire the secondary fire and it fires a broken flare which sends out fire in a straight line in front of you. This leaves four fires on the ground and if you hit something directly with the broken flare it does 70 damage but then all the four fires do damage over time. 
This thing weighs four pounds, which is nice. Or I guess four weight, not necessarily four pounds but for weight, which is good. It does not benefit from the uh, bigger, you know, the high capacity tanks though. Um, you get, you don't get two rounds in it for even if it's a hundred percent increase, you don't, it can only hold one. So, and it's upgrades aren't bad either because it gets 20% bonus increase in damage with each upgrade, um, increasing its weight up to a max of six, which is still not bad. It still gives you plenty of options to use. Um, and yeah, it's not a, it's not a bad weapon. It's actually a pretty fun weapon to use. Um, that being said, it is best used in combination with other specific weapons, though, because you don't want to be running the high capacity tanks. You're probably going to be running the fire damage with it. Fire damage works well with almost everything, but certain weapons definitely benefit more from the high capacity tanks, like the um, like the trench shotgun. So I'm going to put this one also in A tier. Like, it, it's pretty good. Um, limited ammo pool though too. That does kind of hold it back a little bit. So I'm going to put it at the low end of A tier. Uh, it's it's kind of straddling that line between A and B tier for me. All right, and then our final tier three weapon. No, wait, we have one more. We have this one too. I forget about this one. <laughs> for our second to last tier three weapon then, we've got the flamethrower. I keep forgetting that this is a tier three weapon. I think it's a tier four, but it's not. It's a tier three weapon. And the flamethrower is pretty good. Um, it's actually probably my favorite weapon on uh, Firebug. It weighs seven, has a capacity of 100. Um, it does 18 damage on direct hit at the same rate of fire as the cock and burn, so about 850. Um, it does splash damage of five damage up to 1.3 meters, and it has ground fire damage of 10. That's pretty good. Its upgrades increase it by 15% and then uh, up by another 5%, so up to 20% increased damage at a total overall weight of 9. This weapon is actually one of the other ones that I don't really recommend upgrading. Um, at its weight, you can take quite a few things with it. Um, it gives you more options and it's pretty good. It's extremely good at killing trash zeds. Um, it's extremely good at the ground fire. And it's uh, pretty good with the uh, knockback ability, too. Uh, overall, this is actually a really strong weapon. And I think I want to put this in low S tier. Just because of how good it clears off Zeds. Like, it's it's pretty good. I, I'm debating whether either like high A or low S tier. Because you can use it with quite a few other weapons. It does give you that option. It does clear small zeds very, very well. It does okay against big zeds because you can knock them back, you can slow them down with the four fires. Um, it's kind of one of those weapons where it works well in a lot of, it works well in very particular situations, but they're pretty common situations. Uh, all right, and then we got the Fire M16. What is this one called? I don't even remember what it's called. I just always refer to it as the Fire M16. Uh, incinerary rifle. Okay, so yeah, Fire M16. Now this one has the exact same damages as the M16. It has the exact same stats. Um, it weighs six, it holds 30 rounds, it does 30 damage, it has the 669 rate of fire, it does fire damage over time, which is actually kind of making it better than the M16 because, hey, extra damage. And then its secondary fire is the uh, fire grenade, which does uh, 330 uh, impact damage when it hits something and then 100 explosion damage when it explodes plus the fire damage over time and it does create a floor fire dealing damage over time as well so <laughs> it has quite a few things going on with it now the m16 i'm putting into a tier with both the commando and the demo and it's going to go right there with the uh, firebug as well probably yeah somewhere in here i don't know exactly where but um uh, yeah, it's quite good. Um, it definitely benefits from the large magazine because 60 rounds in it is actually a lot. You do notice that. Uh, just like the M16, it's got very clean iron sights. It's got uh, virtually no recoil. Uh, adding fire damage is nice. Uh, the fire grenade on it is pretty good too. I like that. Uh, it's just overall a pretty nice gun. I don't know if I'd say it's S tier, but it's 
Probably high A tier, similar to like these guns. I could see anybody putting these ones into the S tier though too. Because they are pretty decent for them. Alright, now moving on to the tier 4 weapons. Let's talk about the microwave gun. And how the microwave gun has either always been overpowered, it's always been in like S tier, or it's been just kind of underpowered and not that great. And currently it's kind of over or underpowered and not that great. So it does 16 damage on direct hit. It fires at 850 rounds a minute, same as the flamethrower or the cock and burn. It does microwave damage on direct hit, splash damage counting as fire damage and I guess microwave damage. And then it can create ground fires, you know, ground fire damage. Its secondary fire shoots out similar to a shotgun in a way. Um, having a 7.5 meter explosion radius dealing 210 damage. Um, this also can apply splash damage as well. So this thing's ground fire actually does less ground fire than the flamethrower or the cock and burns, though it does 5. So not as good there. Its upgrade gives it 15% uh, more damage at one more weight, which takes it up to 10, which definitely limits you with the weapons you can take with uh, Firebug. Um, Microwave damage is a strong damage. It does well against certain things. At least microwave damage is decent for killing mechanical zeds. Exactly. Microwave damage is good for that purpose. Um, for the weight, though, and for the uh, limited uses, it's honestly not my favorite weapon. It's not awful, because whenever I've used it, I've always felt like it's kind of okay. It's kind of mad, in my opinion. So I think uh, B tier, maybe C tier, it's right about there. Because either the microwave gun is meh, doing okay everything, alright. Or it's overpowered whenever they buff it. Because then it's just like, it does a ridiculous amount of damage per second. Microwave damage does so much more to boss zeds. And you just kill them so fast. It's, there's like, there's, I don't remember there ever really being a middle ground where I was like, okay, I might take this in certain situations. It's either, I'm probably not going to take it and pick something else, or I'm going to take it because it's just broken at the moment. <laughs> like, it's just such a strange, strange weapon. And then we've got the Husk Cannon. The Husk Cannon's actually really good at 8 weight, um, and it can do between 100 and 500 damage on direct impact, which counts as a mixture of explosion and fire damage. And that's pretty good. Um, with its one upgrade, it can upgrade by how much was it? We had 10 or 15 percent, I think. 10 percent, 10 percent increased damage. Um, this can create ground fire that does three damage with a 1.3 uh, meter radius, so it doesn't do that much ground damage. Uh, it does do decent damage over time, and it does do a lot of direct impact damage. Um, some people like to take this for spam firing it with uh, Firebug. I don't really like using it that way. I don't find that that's the best way to use it. Um, I think it's better to charge it up and use the big hit to hit uh, big zeds like Flesh Pounds especially. It does well against them and then switch over to another weapon for taking care of trash zeds. I don't think that it's as great for all around multi-purpose weapon. Um, that being said, it is still really strong at what it does. I think I'm gonna put Husk Cannon for Firebug in low S tier, similar to how I put the Flamethrower in low S tier. It, they're actually pretty good in combination because they make up for each other's weaknesses pretty well. Um, but yeah, it's, I find it more useful. This one, I'd actually probably put Husk Cannon a little bit higher because Husk Cannon can kill small stuff decently well. It doesn't kill it nearly as well as the Flamethrower, but then this one can also hurt big stuff. So that's kind of my thought process there. So the Helios Rifle um, does 50 damage a shot at 600 rounds a minute. This counts as microwave damage, which can also do fire damage, which does damage over time. This one cannot start floor fires. Um, this one also has a pretty high penetrative uh, ability too, where it can punch through multiple zeds. Microwave damage, that's that that's pretty good already. Uh, I think this thing holds, what is it, 40 rounds in the magazine? You're probably gonna use high capacity tanks with it, so you're gonna have an 80 round 
assault rifle that's doing more damage than most assault rifles and doing a damage type that's strong against most big things. That's really good. Um, it does cost quite a bit, but I think it's definitely worth it. And yeah, it probably is at the moment Firebug's best weapon overall. So, hi S tier you go. Um, yeah, it, it, I think it deserves to be up there. It's really quite good. Dual Spitfires, I was debating putting these in S tier too. Like, nice weight, good upgrades, um, very good scaling, very good at clearing uh, small things, and very good at setting up uh, floor fires. So, very good overall. And I might move them up to S tier, I'm not sure. Maybe I will. There we go, put that in S tier. So, uh, yeah. I think that'll be a, a pretty good place to uh, leave off here today. Thanks everybody for coming. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you would like to donate, you can. Uh, we're going to be doing this charity stream for the whole week. So uh, no need to rush. And if you can't donate, that's fine too. You can always share the streams. Um, that really helps out too. Uh, have a great day and I will talk to all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool and bye.